let's get you into a standing forward bend safely in a way that will start to stretch your hamstrings and open your lower back without overstraining or overworking your body. The main key here is how you're working your legs and how you're working with your lower belly to support yourself. Please come to your mat. To work up to a deep standing forward bend, Uttanasana, you'll start by working with the wall and slowly moving your way down. So come to the wall and turn face the wall. Bring your hands up about as high as your front hip points and place them on the wall. Then walk yourself back. To Ardha Uttanasana, half standing forward bend. You want your hands out and your spine to come parallel to the floor and then bend your knees pretty deep. Make sure that your feet line up under your hips. What we're doing here is creating some curve in your lower back. So to do that, send your buns way back and arch your lower back in towards the floor, down towards the floor. For most people, when they're first starting, this is an area that's very hard to get into. So until you've built the curve into your lower back, it's really not very safe to start to straighten your legs. So this may be your work for a while, building curve into your lower back. And then lift up in your low belly so everything's not hanging down. You'll notice that it creates a fair amount of stretch in your hamstrings and in your lower back and in your glutes. Keep stretching there. So it may be a few weeks of just working with Ardha Uttanasana, hands on the wall, feet on the floor, before you're ready to slowly straighten the legs. Only straighten the legs if you can keep the curve in the lower back. If your lower back is reaching up towards the ceiling and your buns are sloping down, then you need to pause and go back and bend the knees. But if you can keep curve, keep curve. Again, it may be a few weeks of waiting here. Every day, roll your thighs back, arch your lower back, lift your low belly. If that starts to be coming along, then come back up. And let's take it to the next phase. You can bring your mat back away from the wall. The next phase would be bring your hands onto some support instead of the floor. Now if there's time where you're practicing to have a chair that you can work with, the chair would be the next best place to start. Place the seat of the chair to face you on your mat. And it's good if the feet of the chair are on the mat so that you don't, uh, the chair doesn't slide on you. And then again, you'll face with your feet parallel and hip distance to the chair. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, then bow forward. Spine stays nice and long and straight. And then bring your hands to the chair. It's a little bit deeper forward bend than we were in or about maybe the same for your spine, depending on how tall you are and how tall your chair is. Again, you can bend your knees, and instead of bringing your buns underneath of you, which you can see puts pull and strain on my lower back, send the tops of the thigh bones back and arch your lower back so that your spine starts to become longer. You may be able to straighten the legs, keeping the low back arched, Spine nice and long. Come a little close to my chair and step back a little bit. Here. You can see how it's starting to move towards a forward bend. Again, it's not the thighs moving forward. Thighs moving back. Low back moves back. Then lift up in your low belly. And it may be some weeks of working here before your hamstrings and low back start to open a little we work here for as long as you need. Push down into your feet. Inhale and come back up. And let's move to the next phase. So as you've opened up a little bit more, you can take your chair away. And now add blocks. Bring your blocks to the end of the mat. Start on the highest height. So with the blocks, all you're doing is raising the floor and giving yourself a little bit more um, lift so you don't have to work quite so hard in the hamstrings. So bring the blocks about shoulder width apart to the top of the mat. 
Bring your feet parallel to each other and pointing straight ahead. And again, inhale, reach up. Exhale and bow forward. Now it's a test for your hamstrings. If you can bring your fingertips or your hands to the block and keep your low back in and up, then you can keep your legs straight. If you can't keep your low back in and up in this way, then bend your knees a little to give yourself more range. One of the pitfalls I see when people bend their knees, though, just to watch out, is that when they bend their knees, their knees come together. Keep your knees out as wide as your ankles. So instead of doing a deep forward bend and trying to put your chest on your thighs if your knees are bent, keep your knees bent and extend your spine. Again, slowly over time, you may be able to start to stretch the legs a little straighter. And then, if the legs are straight with the low back in and up in this way, you may be able to start to bow over. But as long as the low back has trouble moving up and is down in this way, sort of rounding, which creates a hunch in your upper back, you can see how uh, detrimental this is for my upper back. As long as it's in this position, you don't want to be there. So bend the knees, send the inner thighs back, take them wide, and extend your spine. That's your forward bend for the beginning of practice. You can bend over your torso, over top of bent knees for starters. And then extend your spine. And over time, the blocks just get lower. So maybe you've spent a few weeks at the position we were just at, now they're a little lower and you can still bend the knees and bow over. Or they can come a little bit lower even. Bend the knees, bow over. Until eventually, you may be able to take your blocks away to come into Uttanasana. Start with your fingertips on the floor, extend your spine. Bend the knees even here and take the tops of the thighs wide. Then, to straighten the leg, instead of pushing your knee back and your hips back, which rounds your mid back, straighten the leg by taking the tops of the thighs up and over the tops of your ankles and bow the knees. Notice that in this version of the bow, I'm not trying to smash my belly into my thigh. That takes me a little too deep into the pose. Instead, thigh bones stay back, low back keeps the arch of curve. I scoop my tail just a little bit and bow in. My heart goes towards my thigh, sure, but my belly's not flat. There's a lot of space right here. It's maybe hard to see it. That's all right. It's still there. This protects the front of my hip joint. Inhale to come. So many ways to work towards your uh, Uttanasana, your standing forward bend. Start up high, hands on the wall, move to the chair, move to the blocks, and slowly move your way down. This could be a progression that takes quite a bit of time or a shorter amount of time, just depending on how you work with your body and how often you practice. Please let me know how it goes. Thank you for practicing with me. If you have questions or comments, please leave them in the space below. And if you're local to Richmond, Virginia, I invite you to join me in a public class. If you're not nearby, please support your local teacher. Finally, may your practice support you in opening your heart. And may grace guide you to love your way through every day.